2024 Minnesota State High School Boys Basketball Tournaments are brought to you in part by TCF Bank, banking the way you want it. The American Dairy Association, on behalf of your local dairy farmers. Menards, helping families build America's heartland for 32 years. U.S. West, connections you can depend on. By the Minnesota Beef Council. By Pepsi, be young, have fun, drink Pepsi. By the heartbeat of America, Chevrolet, and your local Chevy dealer. And by Great Clips for Hair, our stylists, your style. Tradition of competition. A season of hard work, practice, and teamwork. It all comes down to this. These are the tournaments on nine. Now, Minnesota Nines, Jim Gilliland. Good evening, everyone. Evening has fallen on the Civic Center in St. Paul. We have great double-A semifinal action coming your way. Traditionally, one of the great Friday nights. Uh, it, Friday night is traditionally the great night in the in tournament because the teams are fighting so hard to get to the finals. We already established our Class A uh, finalists today. Morris area will meet St. Agnes tomorrow, and uh, those teams will be scratching and clawing to get there tonight. Janet Carvin and Dick Bramer join me and Dick, our first game. Uh, Moorhead really surprised some teams, I think, yesterday with their furious rally. And then, of course, the Washburn-Worthington Classic leaves us anticipating tonight. Washburn ranked number one, and if they want to uh, get a mirror image of their team, a very well-balanced team, they can look at this Moorhead team because Moorhead follows pretty much the same approach. There's not one star on the team. They have five players, all can score, and all can hurt you on an any given night. So it'll be interesting to see two teams with pretty similar approaches meeting each other in the semifinal bracket. Hopkins and Moundsview, Janet, have uh, two of the stronger programs overall in the Class LA area, in the Twin City metro area. St. Kyle's, of course, venerable coach over there for 27 years, and then Ken Novak Jr. breathed some life into that Hopkins thing about oh, five, six years ago now, and they are really strong, and I expect this game to be uh, evenly matched, too. I think very evenly matched. Moundsview and Hopkins coaches both told us after the game that they didn't feel that their team played very well, and they were just happy that they could play uh, not even up to their potential, but still be able to get a victory and get into the semifinals. Both teams have big inside players. Moundsview's Chad May obviously built an offense around him. Justin White from Hopkins had 32 points in the opening round, so look for a battle of the big guys. But both teams have nice, uh, nice players to round out the starting five, too. As you say, both coaches think the best is yet to come from their squads, and the best is yet to come from Jeff Grayson, who is down under the bucket there with a look at tonight's matchups. Jeff? Thanks, Gilly. I don't know if I can live up to that. Welcome, everybody, to semifinal Friday night. We've got a doubleheader in double-A tonight. We'll have interviews and features with players, coaches, people who make the game what it is. You'll, have, you'll get a chance to hear from Sam Jacobson tonight during our telecast, during our doubleheader tonight, so we'll look forward to bringing you that. And now we go to a man who is the Naismith of reporters, Andy Skoogman. Marvelous. Jeff, a great afternoon has turned into an even better evening here at the St. Paul Civic Center. It looks like we're in for our best crowd of the tournament thus far. Again, as always, I'll be roaming the building, making sure you don't miss any of the action off the court. Are you guys ready? Hi, I'm Nathan. <laughs> Are you ready, Nathan? Yeah, I'm ready. All right, Nathan's ready from Minneapolis, Washburn. We hope you're ready. Let's now go back to a man who's ready for anything. Jeff Grayson. JG? Oh, truer words were never spoken, Marvelous. The Scootman Club lives on, and look at that. They're going for the gold, and then there were four. Who will get the trophy? Introductions are next as Washburn meets Moorhead as the tournaments on nine continue from the St. Paul Civic Center. of time this is a great deal honda's new 24-month lease because now for a limited time with one thousand dollars down you can lease a civic dx for just 169 a month for 24 months or if you prefer about five and a half dollars a day leadership leasing from your honda dealer 
It's the St. Paul Trine Circus, April 7th through the 10th at the Civic Center. Tickets just $7.11 and $13 at Ticketmaster. General admission tickets just $5 at Super America. Discount coupons at Perkins Restaurants, Snyder Drug, and Target Treat Seats. Call 1-800-8-CIRCUS or The Connection. If you have children involved in sports, there's only one eyeglass lens they should be wearing. The Gentex Polycarbonate Lens. Look what happens to a standard plastic lens when struck by a projectile. Compare this to the Gentex Polycarbonate Lens. Notice the projectile simply bounced off the Polycarbonate Lens without breaking it. Be safe and choose Polycarbonate Lenses for your all-star player. Vision World, Minnesota's locally owned optical company. These are annual and perennial weeds before Banvel. These are annual and perennial weeds after Banvel. This is Spike. These were weeds. This is canopy. Unlike contact herbicides, just one spray of Banvel at Spike gives you all the residual control you need. Banvel, it's simple but effective. Before the movie, there was the documentary. Please join Minnesota 9 for this special presentation. Schindler, Monday, March 28th at 7 on KMSP, Minnesota 9. Good. good Pizza at the Civic Center. And we have some good basketball coming your way, too, in the first double-A semifinal matchup between Moorhead and Minneapolis Washburn. Let's get the introductions for tonight's game from Dick Stanford. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the St. Paul Civic Center and to the semifinals of the 1994 Minnesota State Boys Basketball Tournament. Tonight's game matches the champions of Section 8AA with a record of 24 and 2, the Moorhead Spuds. And the champions of Section 5AA with a record of 26 and 1, the Minneapolis Washburn Millers. And now, here are your starting lineups. At forward, for Moorhead, six foot, five inch senior, number 34, Steve Meyer. At forward for Washburn, six foot, two inch senior, number 25, Akeem Carpenter. At forward for the Spud, six foot, two inch senior, number 40, Sean Greenwald. At forward for the Millers, six foot four inch junior, number 55, Adrian Patterson. At center for Moorhead, six foot three inch senior, number 44, John Jaskin. At center for Washburn, six foot 11 inch senior, number 41, Eric Minia. Guard for the Spuds, six foot two inch sophomore, number 12, Seth Greenwald. At guard for the Millers, five foot 10 inch senior, number 13, Byron Suttles. At guard for Moorhead, six foot five inch senior, number 50, Ryan Zimmerman. At guard for Washburn, six foot senior, number 31, Aaron Poon. Moorhead head coach is Chuck Gulsbeg, and his assistant is Bill Quinette. The head coach of the Millers is Lewis Boone, and his assistant is Jim Bowen. The officials for this semifinal game are Steve Winfield and Mike Cannon. And now to welcome you on behalf of the players and to present the sportsmanship code from Moorhead, Mark Berg. From Washburn, Tom Remmerth. Good evening. Welcome to the Minnesota State High School League State Basketball Tournament. We appreciate your attendance at this tournament and hope you enjoy it. The State Basketball Tournament is being played under the rules of the Minnesota State High School League. These rules provide fair play and good sportsmanship among players and coaches. As athletes, we ask that spectators promote the ideals of good sportsmanship, fair play, and respect for our opponents and the cause of the officials. 
Thank you, gentlemen. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we ask you to please rise and honor America as the Washburn High School Band, under the direction of Ed Barlow, leads us in the Star Spangled Banner. in their first state tournament since 1978. They were champions back in 1955. Here are the starting lineups. This is the 18th state tournament that Moorhead has been in. They were champions in 1928 and 1929. Remember the other day when Moorhead won their opening round game with Forest Lake, we kind of teased the fans a little bit, urged them to get down there. We do have a significant uh, increase in number of Spud fans on mm -hmm. hand here as they get set to meet the Millers. And here's your one of the key matchups and of course when you get two teams of this quality there are many but Sean Greenwald had an outstanding game in the quarterfinals ads did Adrian Moose Patterson and we're just about set to tip it off here the Millers who wore white in their opener have the blue with orange trim and the spuds with that well some shade of gray I guess what do we call that pewter pewter uh, pewter and orange sounds good to me all right Moorhead 24 and 2, Washburn 26 and 1. Their only loss to Minneapolis North. They later beat North twice, including the big win in the section to get them to this game, to this tournament. Spud start with the basketball. Right off the bat. 15 footers good for Ryan Zimmerman. Zimmerman had 20 points. In the quarterfinal win over Forest Lake. Into the lane. Minia can't handle it. Sent Greenwald up with a loose ball. Zimmerman feeds it across. Got it. And a foul. John Jaskin has a chance for a three-point play. Well, he's understandably excited, and I guess if there's any surprise here, this forehead is going right out and going after him. Washburn loves this frenetic pace. They've played. Played a couple of games in the hundreds. Moorhead, at least in the early going, is saying, we're right with you. Moorhead's gone over 100 twice themselves this year. North's gone over 100 five times. It'll go out of bounds to the Spuds as Jaskin missed the free throw. Inbounded. Too hard off the glass, tipped up, no good. Minion gets the rebound. Sean Greenwald took his first shot, but missed. Out of bounds to the Millers. We'll see if Minia's role increases significantly. Did not have a real good ball game in the opener. And they did try to go to him right away on the first possession. He's definitely an advantage at 6-11. It was two points against Worthington. Suttles feeds the right corner. Three-point try, good. Team Carpenter with the first bucket for the Millers. Zimmerman quickly answers at the other end. Driving through traffic, feeding the corner again. The Carpenter hits again. Well, we got some fun here. One minute, six to six. All alone underneath. Meyer misses. Rebounded by Minia. Somebody 
forgot about Steve Meyer. Then he got way up there, got a piece of that shot, I think. Suttles to the corner. Patterson. He hits a three. Nine six Millers. Seth Greenwald feeds it inside. Foul in the lane as Zimmerman is ready to pull the trigger again. Maybe a little early to drag this stat out, but I think Moorhead was involved in the highest scoring game in uh, state tournament history where they went over 100 against All Highland Park in 68 or 9. And there you see the foul on the replay. We'll send Moorhead to the line for two. Here we go. Foul called on Adrian Patterson, his first and the first of the game. Not a shooting foul. Off the inbound, Greenwald misses. Whistle a foul called on Zimmerman. Zimmerman with four points already, picking up his first foul. You can tell that they've talked about this trapping defense of Moorheads quite a bit. Forest Lake had a lot of problems with it in the second half. Spacing down. Suttles a great ball handler. Thrown into the lane, pass intended for Akeem Carpenter off his hand out of bounds. The Spuds will get it. Greenwald brings it across. Zimmerman comes from 15, won't go. This ball picked up in the corner by Patterson. Quickly up the floor. Suttles misses. And Greenwald rebounds. Sean Greenwald. Up the set. Ball tipped away. Minia picked it up. Baseball pass up ahead for Carpenter. He'll try for three. Oh, right Bumped in the lane right on the rebound. Here. And a foul coming up against Moorhead. I'd like to welcome those who are watching on KAAL TV in Austin. Catching the state tournament action here. And we're off to a great start in this semifinal. Lewis Boone looks on. We've got a timeout with the Millers leading by three. Submarines that they serve at Subway. I don't want no grease and chicken. Don't want my dinner from a big machine. I want to save everybody. I want to treat tonight. I want a Subway sub shop. Submarine. Buy any foot long and 22 ounce offering after 4 p.m. and get a second foot long for 99 cents. Yeah. This is TCM. Who? Mr. Miller, if you could change the way banks do business, what would you change? I'd make them have a, a lot more cash machines mm -hmm. in more locations mm -hmm. for emergencies. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Thank you. TCM. Banking the way you want it. KMSP Television has purchased the broadcast rights to the 1994 Minnesota State High School Boys Basketball Tournament. No broadcast, rebroadcast, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this copyrighted telecast is permitted without the written authority of KMSP Television and the Minnesota State High School League. And I've just looked up that record. It was 107 for Moorhead, 89 for Highland Park in 1968. We expect a high-scoring game. Here in this semifinal game between two very potent offenses, very balanced teams. Minion feeds the left wing. Boone with a shot comes off. Rebound to Steve Meyer. Meyer runs out of there with it. Greenwald across to his brother. Score! Seth with the basket. Basket number two. Big brother Sean. One point lead for the Millers. Carpenter misses. Rebound comes free to Patterson. He wants three more. Another rebound tipped out. 
and controlled by Aaron Boone. He finds Patterson. No good. A fourth try and a foul in the lane. Three offensive rebounds for the Millers. And a couple of free throws coming. Well, we've seen that Moorhead wants to run. They've gotten out a couple of times on the break, but it looked like a couple of their guys were taking those steps up floor before they had the ball. And right. Washburn's a team you can't do that on. They have so many guys who can go to the board strong. Foul call on Sean Greenwald, his first, team's third. Seven points already for Akeem Carpenter. One time. Miller's beating Worthington 72-71 in overtime on Wednesday. Moorhead beating Forest Lake 71-60. Closer than the score might lead to the believe. Turn around. No good. Rebounded by Minion. Three-point try. Off no good. Minia blocked from behind by Greenwald. Picking up the ball, Suttles. Suttles to Minia. He misses again. The Millers are shooting terribly, but they still have a three-point lead. Minia wants to. Oh, nice play on the run. Steve Meyer. A tough catch and basket by Steve Meyer. Minia's done everything but finish. He looks a lot more active than he did in game one. Just can't get it to go down yet. up his first. 313 left in the first quarter, a one-point lead for the Millers. You see the contact there and the legs buckling for John Jaskins. Or heads ball. until the second half against Forest Lake. He finished the game with 20 points, but scored 15 of those in the second half. Oh, nice look underneath for the miss. Jason Collins missed the shot. And he was fouled by John Jaskin, and that'll be Jaskin's second foul. Now you can be sure when Lewis Boone has his huddles, he's saying 50 and 40. We've got to find those guys because they kind of have similar styles, and they both do not hesitate to go up with a jumper, and they're both very effective with it. Jason Collins contributed five points off the bench in the win over Worthington. For Moorhead, number 34, Steve Meyer. Steve Meyer back in the ballgame for Moorhead, and he will take John Jaskin's spot as Jaskin picks up two early fouls. What? the baseline the ball did not touch the rim a timeout called with 245 left Moorhead still leading by one on the Farm Bureau scoreboard when it's bath remodeling time shop and save at Menard start with a new tub wall from Lions the continental tub wall is only $94 a trackless tub door is $149 then add style with a medicine cabinet from Nautilus You'll find many styles and sizes to fit your needs. This Vanguard medicine cabinet is $8.97. Improve your bath and save at Menards. Save big money at Menards. So we're driving around in my brand new Escort Sport, and she starts complaining about how I don't spoil her enough. And I say, spoiler? Now you're talking. Because not only did my Escort Sport come with a spoiler, but I also got some alloy wheels, a tack, and an airbag at no extra charge. Then she starts saying something about commitment. And I say, whoa, whoa, whoa. My Ford dealer is committed to my satisfaction. Then she looks at me and says, maybe we should just be friends. And I say, okay, okay, okay. You can drive. The Escort Sport. Check it out, your Ford dealer. With Jim Gilliland, Dick Bramer at the St. Paul Civic Center. Lewis Boone 
has to be happy with the way his offense has been operating here in the first quarter. The shots, however, have not been dropping for him. They've gotten a bunch of really good looks at the basket. I like that Washburn tie, the, uh, the orange and blue look there on the neckwear for Lewis Boone. I suppose he got that from Lou Henson, do you? <laughs> 35 left in the first quarter. Zimmerman already has six points. Now he's got eight. Miller's not doing a good job, as you said, locating the shooters. Pass tip picked up by Troy Brendemuel. Sean Greenwald beats Seth. the floor. Carpenter all alone. He's already got 10 points. Washburn will do that too. They'll release if they think they're going to get the ball. We could see a lot of open court plays in this game. Brendan Mule picked up his dribble. Meyer has the ball slapped back and nearly stolen. Shot comes off as Zimmerman missed from close range, and Adrian Patterson got the rebound. Dumped down low, Patterson missed the shot, knocked out of bounds by Brenda Mew. And the Millers will get the ball back with 117 left in the period. Number 41, Eric Minia back in the ball game. Eric Minia back in. He'll replace Jason Collins. Minia not with any fouls yet, so he can assert himself. He has a tendency to get in foul trouble. Dan Geisler in the ball game for Moorhead. Seth Greenwald, Mustering Boone. Boone and Suttles are both. Very good ball handle. Very quick in the perimeter. Suttles misses, and the rebound falls into the arms of Sean Greenwald. Suttles had an outstanding game in the opener. Geisler in the way. Sean Greenwald was posting up, but the pass picked off by Carpenter, who's having a great first period. 30 seconds to play. Three-point try. Boone. Met. Aaron Boone with a three. The fourth three-pointer for the Millers. A good battle in the post there between Patterson and whoever is trying to set up. Blocked by Minia. Millers will have to hurry. Close out the quarter. Washburn with four three-point baskets to open up a two-point lead after the first period. From tournaments past, here's another great clip from Great Clips for Hair. Last year, during the 1993 Boys Class AA Championship game against Anoka, Creighton Durham Hall's senior forward Arvesta Kelly Jr. made this great pass to senior guard Myron Taylor for a smooth basket to make it a 12-point game and a win over the Anoka Tornadoes. This great clip has been brought to you by Great Clips for Hair. You like milk and it shows. You like milk and it shows. You like milk and it shows. You Show. Milk, it does a body good with vitamin A to help keep skin smooth, calcium for strong bones, and protein to help build muscle. You like milk and it shows, it does a body good. We're back at the Civic Center. Take a look at Akeem Carpenter finishing off here, rising up above. He's at the long, two long shots, a couple of nice moves inside, a dunk, and then 
Aaron Boone. If these two guys get going at the same time, they'll make it tough on Moorhead. We have a two-point game right now. The Millers in front. Consolation from this afternoon, Class AA. Forest Lake 74-59 over Worthington. And Creighton Durham Hall 70-59 over Apple Valley. A consolation tonight. Moorhead staying in the zone. That's what makes this matchup so intriguing. There's so many different weapons for each team. Cover one man, somebody else might be open. Patterson missing. Minia missing. Minia missing again. Carpenter for three. Rebounded by Minia. And now a traveling call, and the Spuds finally will get the basketball. The Spuds have got to do a better job on the defensive boards, or sooner or later the Millers will be able to hit some of those shots and really have a chance to bury Moorhead. Well, you got to hope that Minia can just keep from hanging his head. He's got his hands on a lot of balls. Yeah. And, and that's positive in itself. He's got to look at it that way. Washburn's really stepped it up on the defensive end, though, lately. Seth Greenwald finds Zimmerman. Sean Greenwald for three. His first bucket of the game. And more heads in front. Misses a three. Rebounded by Brenda Mule. Short by Zimmerman. Rebound finally controlled by Suttle. Behind the back. Back to Suttle. Akeem Carpenter fits Suttle for Byron's first basket of the game. And now he's kicked that temple back up again. Got the crowd and then an exciting play. A good pass by Carpenter. Washburn played such a great game with Worthington and a good start to this game. Washburn bringing out the best of their opponents in this tournament. Foul called on Patterson, I believe, and that's his second. So Adrian Patterson has two quick fouls with 6.18 left in the half. Washburn leads by a point. There's a timeout on the floor. Finishing in style, Jason Suttles. Millers by one on the Banville scoreboard. Mr. Nelson? Mm. This is TCF. Mm. Mr. Nelson, if you could change the way banks do business, what would you change? I'd keep them open later on Saturdays. Thank you, Mr. Nelson. Mm. Now open till 3 p.m. on Saturdays at most locations. TCF, banking the way you want it. Here come those hippies again. Test one, two, one, check. Is that you, Sunflower? Police hasn't changed in 25 years. Yeah, yeah, it's a shame. You know, they should have put in some condos by now. Joe, remember when we did this 25 years ago? Country Joe McDonald. No. Wouldn't it be nice if your youth was as easy to hold on to as an ice cold Pepsi? You think I'll go skinny dipping again? Yeah. I hope not. GMC Viking Land Cam looking over the St. Paul Civic Center scene. Have they seen Sam Jacobson in the house? He's here. Yeah, we're looking, he was. We're going to talk to him during the games tonight. We're going to have a highlight, uh, show you some of the highlights of Sam's 